Hi, I'm Dr. Randy Martin. We're here at the German Heart Center in Munich, and I'm thrilled to be joined by our dear friend and colleague known to many of you, Tuisak from Bangkok. Now, Tuisak is not only a fabulous surgeon, but he's uh, the PCU director of the Bangkok Heart Center. He's currently the president of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons in Thailand. And most of all, he's educated all of us around the world with about rheumatic heart disease treatment and surgery. Tuisak, thanks for joining Thank me. Thank you very much. It's always good to be with you. Um, not only have I learned from you, but I've enjoyed your your friendship so much. Thank you so much for your so kind words. Tell me about the, the whole state of uh, thinking about rheumatic heart disease patients and how they differ from the patients we usually see, which are, have more degenerative mit mitral valve disease. How, what's the difference in those? Yeah, that's a very important point. Actually, rheumatic patient is, the mitral valve is the same every, everywhere, I mean. Uh, but uh, it's just because the rheumatic disease have some special effect to, to the mitral valve itself. It's an inflammatory process, so it has effect all the every part of the mitral valve and resulted in quite unique uh, pathology lesion compared to degenerative or bilateral disease right. that we found more common in the Western country. It, it has a effect on the leaflet itself, make it thicker, make it retract, and the subvalve apparatus like cord is right. fusion and shorten. That's the key thing that's happened to rheumatic. So, so, I mean, and, and I think that's, that's really an important point. And I know that in your surgical approaches, like you were uh, teaching us yesterday, is that you, ha you think about the repair of the valve. Okay, we'll talk about that. But you think about doing something to influence all those components that are affected. Isn't that right? The movement of the valve? Yeah, exactly. There's something quite uh, new because I, I, I learned from the pioneer in the Western country, like Professor Kapong, the Dr. Duran Cosgrove. And the way that they treat the disease is depend on the pathology, right. like there's some elongation of the cord, rupture of the cord. So they're concerned mainly on the systolic. Right. Because there are no problem of diastolic except functional MR. Right. But when I, I return home, it's quite problematic because everything is quite upside down. We have to retract the leaflet, shorten cord, stick, thicken, very restrictive movement. So we have to find a way based on this principle, make them move up, make them mobile, make them more pliable so that the mitral valve can function back into the normal, normal right. state again. This is something. So, so you're, yeah, I think that's very unique. So you, you are looking at both diastole and systolic and, and surgical. Your, now your treatment, your treatment is very unique and you know, we're always intrigued with this, this concept of peeling off the rheumatic changes on the valve. Tell me a little bit about that. Because I, th I think of this as being like concrete poured on a valve and there's no way you can get it off. But tell me about that. Yeah, that's, that's a very important point as well because that's a turning point of us when we started to repair the valve. I mean, we, we have to study on the heart valve dissection and we find, we believe that every single uh, anatomy of the mitral valve, it means something. The, it was built for something, like the fenestration, the way that it's fanned out with the gap inside, because it's allowed the movement of the leaflet more transverse and allow another alternative flow. Right. And the mitral, the leaflets need to be, have a good geometry with enough quantity of the tissue so that they can bulge up during the systole. Right. And we think why is that? Because they want to absorb more tension and bear more stress so that the primary cord is more durable. So equalize the stress. Yes. That's interesting. So, so, so that we, we find a way and, and then we learn from the pioneer like the peeling is, we learn from some of the video from Professor Sampat Kumar during the meeting, he peels it off and then it's just, oh, wow, is that? <laughs> and then I went back home and then start 
And then we do more aggressively until we stuck to the rough zone. We cannot go. Okay. If we go beyond that, we make a hole every time. And then make, we think why we need to have the rough zone. And all of this gradually, piece by piece of the knowledge, it come up to something, a more perfect picture of the mind of our, and then guide us how to do it. Like the way we dance, make it dance. Make the mind of our dance. It's a, it's a unique structure that is love dancing. <laughs> It's it's interesting. You have a you have it doing a, a waltz instead of a rap dance, and that right? I think that, but that I mean it's a phenomenal theory, and that's I, th I think that's important. The the I mean really important. Is there? Do you think that there are as you've gone around the world teaching us about this? Are there unique educational needs that the surgeon needs to know about treating the patient with rheumatic versus degenerative or even functional disease? Oh yeah, that's, that's another very important point. Because I've been traveling around and then have, 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 have talked to surgeons. They are brilliant, but sometimes, because like I, I told you before, that we, are focused, we focus almost always Sicily. Correct. Then we have to just click on it. We have to think about the Sicily. And once they capture this fact, they can do it. Because it's just like something that makes you blind. You pull it out, they understand immediately that. You need to think about how to make the commissure open, not just the commissure. Do it, papillotomy, fenestration, cut it down, peel it off, and then that's it. But, but, but you don't peel off of the cords. You're, you're basically, I mean, if you've got these shortened and retracted cords and you're, you're separating them, or do you actually try to peel off? Uh, I usually, I cut it and put it in the cord. Okay. It's work. But then I found that uh, the way that the tissue anchor to the leaflet, it has some meaning. Because it needs to and then combine to the rough zone and become the single unit to hold this leaflet together. So. I found another technique. When they become so short, like the leaflet and the cord become right, like this, right, right. you just finesse that. So you do finesse. And mark it down, and then let the length of the papillotomy become the length of the new cord. Got it. And it simplifies everything. It's so good. That's fabulous. <laughs> but I mean, I think this concept of thinking about diastole and the whole totality of motion, I mean, obviously the master surgeons do think about that, but rheumatic offers a special challenge. Let me finally ask you this question. Is, as we see advances in now in transcatheter therapies, yeah. okay, the transcatheter therapies are coming toward mitral valve repair and, a, and um, replacement. Does this change the way you're going to think about the lifetime treatment of the patient with rheumatic mitral valve disease? In other words, you, you know, your patients are a very different population, but where do you see transcatheter coming into this? Yeah, I think every new thing brings about some new dimension of thinking. At the same time, it brings the new opportunity and the learning experience as well. Like transcatheter will allow us to, to offer something to a group of patients that is too sick for the current technology to help them, then they open. They, we can do that. And then by then, for somehow we can learn from this technology and we squeeze it and bring this understanding and information back to our own practice. Right. Maybe somehow we can improve it. I, I, I believe in that way. Because every time that the technologies keep moving forward, there is new technology coming in, help us to take care of more patients, and we squeeze some, some knowledge to improve our existing technology. Then we can be better. Something like Wartech, something like the ring itself, all of this make us understand something more. And nothing can can repress the imagination power inside our brain. And then when we learn this, we think more. And because of our passion, we can do something better. I believe that. 
I've always said you have to have a passion for excellence, and you do. And you know, because you've taken such good care of your patients, you know, in your country, and also you've educated us. So thank you so much for visiting with us. I meant it when I said that I value not only your professional expertise but your friendship. You've, thank you so much, Randy. Thank you, and thank you for joining us. I hope you'll come back. Yes.